God is so good. You may not realize, but when, when you, the worship team leads us into a time like what we had this morning of praise. Praise is the voice of faith. And when you declare praise, you're declaring, you're releasing faith. And if you study praise in the Bible, and I think probably most of you have, when praise goes forth, the enemy is scattered. When praise goes forth, the enemy is defeated. When praise goes forth, God is victorious. And so I just want to encourage you this morning that, that uh, you've got to understand that that was not just a uh, uh, Sunday morning singing time. This was a time of declaration this morning. It just seemed like the Lord was declaring and, and, and getting us to agree with him to declare and, 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 and send forth a yes into the atmosphere, yes to God. And, and I'm telling you, again, you need to begin to develop a winner's mindset that we run the race that's set before us looking unto Jesus the usher and finish our faith. And I'm going to tell you something. Jesus won. Jesus won. And so that means if I'm looking to Jesus, I win. If I will run the race right, like Paul says, we win. Because we're in the winner's circle. Amen. So you've got to get your mind changed and get it off of your circumstances off of the, the what, whatever is coming against you, and you've got to get your mind on Jesus, who is your um, winner, because he's already won the race for you. You just got to run the race set before you by him, and that means you win. Look at somebody and say, I win. I win. Because Jesus already won. That wasn't my message, but I'm trying to, God's trying to stir people up today. Because I just sense in my heart that we have sometimes a lot of uh, word lip service to God. But we go right out of that situation and go right back into our doubt and unbelief. I remember Kenneth Copeland one time, years ago. He was just starting to learn about prosperity. And he was speaking the scriptures, speaking, 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 you know. And finally the Lord said, just be quiet. He said, you don't believe a word you're saying. Andrew Womack one time, uh, there was a teacher that came to his own school teaching on prosperity. So Andrew went to his class and, and he said, Andrew said, I never took one note. Everything this guy teaches, I teach. So he went to the Lord and he says, what's the difference between him and me? I mean, I teach the same thing. And the Lord spoke to him and said, he believes it. And Andrew repented and started believing. And I'm going to tell you this morning, some of you are not believing I'm just going to camp right here. I, I just know this is the Holy Ghost. Some of you are giving head knowledge, lip knowledge, but you're not believing God. You're going, you're going to come right. I just hear some of you saying, yes, I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. And you walk away from that, that confession and you begin to go right back into your unbelief. You put the emphasis in the wrong place. Yes, I know I'm healed, but... Yes, I know God will bless me, but you got to turn that around and say, this sickness might be attacking me, but Jesus. My finances may look bad, but Jesus. See, you got to change the, you got to change your butt and, and change the emphasis here. <laughs> Amen. You've got to understand that God is a God that responds to faith. And, and he knows when we're blowing smoke and not speaking faith. 
And God is stirring us. I'm telling you, I just know in my heart right now, you and I have got to begin to move away from just saying something and, 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 and theologically knowing something. We got to move into believing what we are understanding from God. We got to believe it. We've got to understand that if I say it with, believe it with my heart and say it with my mouth, it shall come to pass. Amen. Jesus said it would. And he's not a man that he should lie. Some of you, the best thing you can do is put tape over your mouth and a blindfold on and earplugs in. So that your senses are shut off so you can believe. We... We do not go by sight. We go by faith. And faith calls those things that are not as though they were. Abraham believed God because he said he was persuaded that what God said, God would do. And I just sense so strongly this morning that some of you are saying the right things, but you're not believing the thing you're saying. You're trying to talk yourself into believing, and you're not believing it. You want to. You desire to. Church, you've got to believe it. You've got to step into that faith and believe it. Yeah, but my bank account. Yeah, but God. Yeah, but this sickness, yeah, but God. Yeah, this, 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 but God. You've got to put God on the other side of that. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when when the king says, was your God able to deliver you? And they said, yeah, he's able, but even if he don't, I won't bow to you. Some of you got to get such a tenacity of faith that you know what? I'm not going to bow and I'm not going to burn. I'm not going to bow to the Nebuchadnezzars in my life. I'm not going to bow to compromise. Compromise is the biggest, one of the biggest enemies of the church. Because what you compromise to keep, you're going to lose it. But if you 100% give yourself to God, God can 100% give himself to you. And when that happens, faith comes out. And when faith comes out, victory comes. See, when you're in a situation and it looks so hopeless, you don't even believe God could fix it. Because you're looking at the mountain instead of the God who can remove the mountain through your faith. I like what Andrew says. Don't talk to God about the mountain. Talk to the mountain about God. Speak to that mountain. Speak to that mountain. Speak to that mountain. Then Jesus said, when you believe it in your heart and what you say will come to pass, that mountain can be moved and cast into the sea. I, this is not my message, but it, it is right now. <laughs> and I'm, ta- I'm starting to teach us about the culture of love. Yeah. But faith worketh by love. Yeah. So if I'm in love with God, that means I believe everything he says. Yeah. I believe every word he says. Yeah. There's no parenthesis there. I believe God, but you know all these things happen to me. Well, everything that's happening to you happened to him because he took it for you. He was rejected. He was spit upon. He was despised. He was beaten. He was betrayed. He took sickness upon himself. He took your pain. He took your weakness. He took everything that through the curse came on you. Jesus took it on himself. 
That's the fullest expression of love we'll ever experience. The love of Christ that passes knowledge that we might be filled with all the fullness of God. We are men and women of courage, of strength. You ought to study some of the old martyrs. Not one of them was fearful. One young man, Dorothy was watching a movie about Polycarp, and they're, they're feeding Christians to the lions, and this young man went out there and he ran towards the lion. He wasn't afraid. There was another guy that they were burning at the stake. And it was, you know, kind of, kind of mercy. They'd light the fire behind you. And he told the sheriff, he said, come around and light the fire in front of me. I'm not afraid to be here. Polycarp was a disciple of John. They tried to burn him at the stake and his body wouldn't burn. So they had to take a sword and kill him with it. We are of the same spirit. How dare we as a church backslide over a hangnail. Over what somebody says about you. Over your silly finances. We are the body of the Lord Jesus Christ and we are of the same spirit we are of the same courage greater ones on the inside of us how dare we as a church bow to the circumstances of demonic fear or bow to compromise what do people think of me What will my friends think if I serve Jesus? Well, what will Jesus think of you when you go stand before him and you've served your friends all of your life and you never served the living God? I didn't intend this, but I'm telling you, it's all over me. Because the culture of love is a culture of faith and it's a culture of power and it's a culture of glory because God is love and you and I are born of that same love, that same fiber, that same spirit that was in Christ Jesus is in us. We will not bow. We will not burn. Some of you, God is going to separate you from relationships because you're putting that relationship before God. God's calling his church to himself in love. Jesus said he presents us to himself without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. That's how much he loves us. And it says this, if you are being persecuted, it means the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. You are the people of almighty God. And it's going to take the same fiber, the same strength from God's people to bring glory in these last days and stand against the ungodly assault that's coming against this nation, against the church. That's the Antichrist. And greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. I'm a fighter. I'm a little guy, but I grew up fighting. Everywhere my dad moved a lot, everywhere we moved, there comes these bullies. I didn't give them a chance to talk. I beat the crap out of them because I got beat up one time and I said, that ain't going to happen again. So I could see it every first day of school. Here they come. I seen the leader and I took him out before he had a chance to say anything to me. I don't care what I had to do. If I had to kick him, bite him, stab him, choke him, hit him with a club, I didn't care. But he was not going to bully me. And guess what? Bullies are cowards. You and I 
are not cowards and we will not bow to bullies. We will not bow to this universe. We will not bow to the devil. We will not bow to anything. We stand victorious in the name of Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You have been given his name, his authority. Greater is the one inside of you than in this world. Man, praise is powerful. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, we just move some things in the heavenly realm. Woo. God's on the inside of you, church. God is breaking compromise off of you, fear off of you, doubt and unbelief off of you. Amen. Worry off of you. Amen. How dare you stand against the living God by your unbelief? Amen. I'm not yelling at you. I'm yelling at that unbelief. That's your enemy. Amen. And unless you treat it like an enemy, you won't walk in faith. Right. Quit setting a table for it. Yes. Throw it out in the trash. Yes. Be like a little girl. <laughs> Don't mean that literally, guys. <laughs> I know it's a crazy world out there. This little girl's in school and her teacher, unbeliever, says, well, just what do you do when the devil knocks on your door? She says, I just let Jesus answer it. <laughs> You need to let Jesus answer the knock of the devil on your door. And you need to say, in Jesus' name, I will not open that door to you. So Jesus, go. In the name of Jesus, sickness, go. In the name of Jesus, finances change. In the name of Jesus, you let him answer the door. Yeah. <laughs> Some of us are... Oh, it's the devil. I'm going to open the door a little bit. Hope he don't hurt me. Oh, I can't talk about Jesus. The devil will hear it. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Jesus, the name above all names. Every knee bows to that name. In heaven, under the earth, every knee bows to the name of Jesus. You bear the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the living Son of God. And His Spirit's in you. His Spirit's upon you. Because that's love. That's love. Amen. Love you, Jesus. <laughs> I just want you to know, church, we're in an awesome day. And um, God's looking for his soldiers, his men and his women, who are going to walk in God's army and not get entangled again with civilian affairs. And it's going to, some of you young men especially, God needs his young armor bearers. He needs his young men to stand up and say, I will not bow anymore to compromise. I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. I don't want anybody in this church that would come before the Lord someday. And he would say, you denied me on earth. I won't confess you before my father and my angels. Now, I'm not talking about you losing your salvation. But the scripture declares to us that we can produce wood, hay, and stubble. And that is the works of the flesh. And those will burn up, though our spirit will be kept alive. And I don't want any of you to deny the Lord. I don't want any of us to do that. Because I want your name 
confessed off the mouth of Jesus to his father and his holy angels. This is a call to duty, I guess. <laughs> Amen. I remember when I went in the Navy. We got there. We weren't treated kindly. We weren't, we weren't embraced with nice words. I heard words I didn't know, and I heard some pretty bad words, but I heard some new ones from my company commander. My name was at the end of it. But I remember the day that we had to take, we put on our, our dungarees, which are, you guys, it's jeans and a shirt and hat and all this stuff. And they had been packed in mothballs. And we smelled like a bunch of mothballs. And we went one day and we took all of our civilian clothes, rings, everything that identified me with a civilian. I'll never forget it. We put it in a package and we sent it home. And we had a new uniform on. And we were told, you do not belong to your mama anymore. You don't belong. You belong to the United States Navy now. And listen, that was a rude awakening. And you didn't realize how identified you was. I was identified with my civilian life. I had to now take a new identity. It's called the United States Navy. And they put me through 12 weeks of boot camp to make sure I was in that identity. And I remember one time that my, we, we had to, <laughs> we, <laughs> we had to take our, our dungaree jeans and you hang them up with the fly facing north because north of us were the Marines. <laughs> Get the picture what it was representing anyway. <laughs> I know there's a Marine back there. <laughs> But one time, my bunkmate, we switched out. I said, all right, I'll, I'll do the scrub washing and you hang them up. Okay? Well, he hung my dungarees up wrong. So I had Uga Uga exercises for an hour. And Uga Uga one, you flip right on your back and put your hands and legs straight up on cement. Uga Uga two, you flip over. Like this, on cement. And the company commander would come and say, what are you doing, boy? I'm thinking, sir. What are you thinking about? I'm thinking about how I'll never do anything wrong in the Navy again. <laughs> Ooga, Ooga three, you jumped up, and you got right on the balls of your knees and put your hands up in the air. We're on concrete. And then when, after an hour, we're all lined up. Company commander comes up to the first guy. Are you tired? No, sir, you're not. We'll get back down there. Comes to the next one. Are you tired? Yes, sir. You are? You shouldn't be. Get back down there. Comes to the third guy. Are you, are you tired? Or He said, I don't know. You don't know? Well, get back down there. <laughs> it didn't matter what you said. You're going to get back down there. The point I'm making is, they were instilling us into a new identity. And they had to break us before they could make us. You guys been in the military, you know what I'm talking about. Dave knows, Pete, now all you military guys, they have to break you because they have to learn something from you. Are you going to be submissive? If you're out there on the front line somewhere, your, your buddy's life depends on your attitude. And you had to learn obedience. And you had to learn that it's not my will anymore. The drill sergeant says, do this, you do it. In our case, it was a chief. And if you didn't do it, they would have some things that was punishment to go along with it. 
I knew a guy one time, we had to wash our socks out every day. There's a bucket at the end of the bed and, and at the bunk. And you, you wash your socks and you'd hang them over the bucket. Well, this one guy didn't wash his socks. He just hung them over the bucket. Well, guess what? The company commander came along, smelled the socks. Didn't smell good. So we're out there all standing at attention. He walks up to this guy and he says, are these your socks? Yes, sir. Open your mouth. <laughs> and he stuffed those socks in this kid's mouth and made him chew on them. Now, that's just some mild things. I, the other thing, I ain't going to tell you what they did. <laughs> anyway, the thing I'm saying is, gee, Paul said it this way. When, as a soldier, you can't get entangled with the things of the civilian life anymore. In other words, now that you're a soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ, you cannot be entangled by your old nature. Because God's creating a new identity in you. And you don't belong to the old nature anymore. You belong to Him. And the purpose of my training, that was during Vietnam, was you're going to war and you have to be trained to go into the war to fight the battle. For instance, on a ship, there's duty stations. And all movement, when they have a battle call, all movement on the right side, I won't tell you port or starboard because you won't, but on the right side, you go up and forward. The left side, you go down and backwards. So you got this motion so that you don't have guys coming down the ladder and try, trying to go to the ladder. So no matter where you are at on the ship, if I'm on the left side and my duty's over here on the right side, I had to come down and come back up around. There was an order in it. And there's an order in the kingdom of God. It's by moving by the Spirit and the Word of God. Because God's training you as His army. You know, He's an interesting God. He's our God of love. He's our Father. He, Jesus, our elder brother. We have all... God is family. But I'm telling you, Jesus is also the commander-in-chief. And I'm telling you right now, there, in love, there's a training... To become warriors. This was not my, I'm just telling you, I'm speaking about what the Lord's putting on my heart. Because this is a day that America, not only America, but the world, they need the church. They need the body of Christ, the soldiers of God. They need men and women of courage and conviction that will stand up in the face of this bully antichrist spirit and say, no, that's enough. And to release the power of the name of Jesus. Release the miracles. Release the salvations. Release the healings. Release the gifts of the Spirit. Release Him to do warfare. Because our warfare is not carnal. But it's mighty through God. Through the pulling down of strongholds. I just feel the Lord's call, say, I'm calling His people to attention. When we got off the train from Kansas City, Missouri to San Diego, California. We got off the train and here comes the company commander. We all tried to stand at attention. He said, don't try and stand at attention. You don't even know how to do it yet, you bunch of... That's what he called us. We had to learn even how to stand at attention. We had to learn the Navy way of life. In the kingdom of God is the same church. We need to lead, learn the kingdom way of warfare. Of taking down strongholds. Of taking the name of Jesus. And setting captives free. And setting yourself free from the bondages that the enemy is trying to bring against you. But if you don't treat the devil, the flesh your own unbelief, your old self, if you don't treat those as an enemy, you'll never destroy them. One of my buddies in Vietnam 
had a barber that every day he's cutting your hair, even shaving you if you wanted. That night they had a raid. And when the raid was over, they went out to see the bodies. And that barber was one of those that was cutting their hair in the day and, and coming and killing them at night. He was the enemy in the camp. Listen, the enemy has enemies in the camp. Now I'm talking about people in here. I'm talking about demonic enemies. And they can infiltrate the church. But God sets a standard against them. God raises a standard against them. That's a church that's walking in such closeness to God that the enemy is, ex is, is absolutely exposed. There's a religious church today that God's getting ready to set his church free from. Yeah. Amen. Just watch. But I, I just feel the Holy Spirit's encouraged. I hope you're encouraged this morning. I wasn't yelling at you. You know that, don't you? I'm yelling at doubt and unbelief. Yeah. Wigglesworth was, said he would minister with tears. But he would hit people. He kicked a baby clear across the front of a stage one time. And when the baby got to the other side, it was healed. Now, I wouldn't do that. But he did it because God told him to. And people would get mad at him. He'd say, mind your own business. I know mine. But he said, I, he hated sickness and disease and the devil so much. He said, I am not fighting them. I'm casting that thing out of them. Because he had this tenacity that he hated the devil and everything he brought. And until we get that mentality... We'll tolerate his activity in our life. And I'm telling you what, we need to come to the place of intolerance towards the enemy. And we do it by faith that worketh through love. A love that so loved us that crushed himself on that cross for us, allowed it to happen. Now we should bring the power of that crushing to humanity because he's in us what if you gain the whole world and lose your soul you know that's not your salvation as much as your, just your soul you know your spirit's born again but our soul needs to be saved by the engrafted word we can have a powerful born again spirit and a carnal soul and a carnal body that's why we have to be transformed and our minds renewed. Because this in church, God is calling us to attention. And I just want to encourage you this morning that you are God's army. Amen. Amen. And you have the power to resist the devil as you submit to God and he will flee from you. You have the power to set people free. You have the power to release salvation. You have the power and authority to release blessing into your own life and the life of your family. Don't be caught having friends and you, you, you're, you're afraid to live for Jesus because it, just think that the day would come and they're standing before the Lord and look at you and say, why didn't you tell us? Because we're going into an eternal hell. Eternal life has far more value than this life. Amen. But we are in the eternal life of God even now to bring the power of it into someone else's life. Are you getting this? None of that's on my notes. <laughs> but it's on the Holy Ghost notes. Amen. I'll tell you some things that's going to come. You want to hear it? 
All this crazy stuff in the United States, wait about six months, it's going to drain that quick. Haman's gallows are almost complete. And there's going to be a quick healing, a quick hanging. The swamp, there's a leak, but it's going to go... You watch. God did not start this process to let the enemy come back and get it. The whole thing that's happening, not just in the United States, but worldwide, is an antichrist movement against the church. That's what it's all about, church. And that's why all these other nations, these European nations that are just, you know, some of them like France is like less than 5% Christian. But this, our forefathers founded this nation on the providence of God. And God has remembered our forefathers. And that's why you have seen hate like you've never seen it before. Because it's the devil. So the political scene, God is in the move on it. But guess what? That's not what changes a nation. This is what changes a nation. The body of Christ that can bring the power of the kingdom to drive out the kingdom of darkness in cities, in nations, in countries. That's what we're getting ready to move into, church. God's doing the political side. He really is. But guess what? We bring the spiritual side. You're going to see, in the next few years, you're going to see a great awakening hit America. A tsunami of revival of God's glory like this nation has never known before. And it's not only going to hit here, it's going to hit worldwide. We're going to see an end-time harvest. Don't be caught on the outside of it. You will be brought into it, but there's an easy way to get in. There's a hard way to get in. Get in the easy way, folks. Say yes. It's a day of repentance and surrender. Because God has greatness on the inside of you. He has greatness. I'll end with this, I think. Gideon. I think Nick or someone was talking about him the other, maybe Mike. But here he is hiding wheat in a wine press so that so it's not stolen from him. And when the angel of the Lord appeared to him, he said, Hail, Gideon, thy mighty man of valor. See, he called Gideon according to what God said he was. But Gideon saw himself different. Me? My family is the least of all the families, and I'm the least in my family. You're calling me a mighty man of valor, but listen to the angel's words. The Lord is with you. Amen. And of course, we know the story then. He, he made these cakes, the angel burnt, and he took a, and, and, and he put a fleece out before God, another fleece out, and, and God used him to go to the enemies, and they were talking about how Gideon was going to destroy him. God encouraged him step after step. Until, until all of a sudden, this is what this scripture it says, the Spirit of the Lord clothed Gideon with himself. And when that day came, it's like the day of Pentecost, Gideon became a new man. He became the mighty man of valor that God called him to be. And I want to tell you right now, I don't care where you're at in life, God calls you men, God calls you women, men and women, mighty men and women of valor, for the Lord thy God is with thee. Amen. 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 So when you say yes to God, he's going to come into your life. He's going to rearrange the furniture. He's going to change some things. He's going to repaint the walls. He's going to change your identity. And you're going to be more like him than ever before. Your stubborn pride's going to go. Your opinions are going to go. Your, your unbelief is going to go. And Christ will live in you. As this is taking place, I'm telling you, you're going to see this happen. All this craziness, there's going to be a sudden stop to it. We're going to see some people go to jail. All they're doing is covering their rear ends. 
Because they're all corrupt. Both sides of the camp. But God's draining the swamp. Hope you're listening. (laughs) But more than that, church, God is draining the spiritual swamp where Satan has had his way in America. And we, the church, are pulling the plug. We're going to set this nation free from the force of darkness. Because you are the army of the Lord. Coming. Because that's love. That's the culture of God's kingdom. To bring the love of Christ to set captives free. We'll do it. How many of you this morning, this has stirred your heart? If it hasn't, your wood is wet. That's all I can tell you. You got to be careful that your heart's not so hardened that you won't open it to God. I really sense this morning it's a call of God to say, open your heart to me. Open your heart to me. What you compromise to keep, you will lose. I believe it's a call to surrender. So, how many of you sense this? I want you to stand up. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I had none of that in mind, but that's pretty awesome. (laughs) Bless me. Got me on the right path. You know, when God's speaking to you, he's speaking to me. You understand that, don't you? He's speaking to all of us. It's interesting. Yesterday, I spent time with him, and he said to me yesterday, he said, it's time for you to make a decision, the divine yes, like never before. So it doesn't surprise me this morning that we're telling you, I don't ever talk to the worship team, that they were singing about, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. If you would do this with me, lift your hands. And if you mean it, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I say yes to you. I say no to the devil, no to myself, and I say yes to your will. Now, Lord, give me the grace to live in this divine yes. Grant me repentance. That my heart changes. That the divine yes lives in me. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 